she's gonna die. That's what she's gonna do. Right. She's gonna die. <laughs> Sorry, were you leaning in for my answer? Yeah, I, I was waiting for it. I was trying to let you speak, and then you, you, you left me hanging, so the answer was she's... Yeah, I just like to do that. Ah, it's my favorite thing to do. I know you love it. You're, you're that guy that doesn't respond to the high fives in, in client, or you just kind of like... Oh, no, no, no. I spam the hell out of those high fives in client. I'm the guy who, like, high fives at least a hundred times before the game starts. Yeah. And then during your whole entire landing really phase, sure screwing up your last hitting. <laughs> and my own last hitting, of course, too. So. Well, of course. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be the same game if I didn't ruin my own last hits. Uh, another, <laughs> another dire smoke. This time it's going to be Ninja's Pajamas going for that uh, warding smoke. Hmm. And... Does I not get scouted like... out. Nah. Oh. Nova doesn't see them. The PPD might reveal pretty soon. Here he does, but uh, just finds Nova on the side, so they uh, they get a roll in, actually. 3-3. Three, three, pretty far away for the stun, though. My Probably won't be able to skills. get this kill. The regen's coming in. 12 HP regen, guys. OS Frog, please. It's real good. 30 seconds to battle. Super good. <laughs> So the one big issue with LGD's draft that we didn't really talk about is look at their stuns. And by stuns, I mean it's Rubik Lift. That's it. They are 100% reliant on FY stealing either roll or preferably hoof stomp and then using that in order to get a second stun. Other than that, it's the roots from Ember Spirit, roots from the Lone Druid, and a one point four, sorry, a two second lift. That is their stunts. So their initiation NIP. potential is very weak. Mm -hmm. NIP confirming three runes again. It's like in the previous game. They've been very good about that all series. Well, the believe it or not, those bounty runes make a pretty significant difference. They don't look like they do on the surface when it comes to the like initial money that comes in on the first wave, but when you look at it, like the bounty runes could make a difference in a whole entire game. Absolutely. Like 15 I... minute mark, those bounty runes are pretty huge. Over the course so... of the game, like the team gets a 3-1 split every single time. That's like if you have a 30-40 minute game, that's like a I think I did the math once, it's like 3,000 net worth swing. Something crazy mm -hmm. like that. It's a, it's, it's a lot. And you'll see certain teams prioritize it more than others. And just Jam is definitely one that prioritizes it. Mm hmm. So, where do you think our action will be in this game? Because it. I, I, I wanted to say it would be bottom. But, yeah, mid, mid probably has the most action because it's actually not the. Uh, no, it's not Lone Druid mid. I like this mid lineup a lot better, actually. I feel like Fado would be... is a little bit happier with this one. He can not tolerate it much easier. Yeah, I think maybe he's happier with it as well. They they last picked his hero in this game, whereas I think the Ember was a little earlier in the draft last time. Hmm. Nova in a bit of trouble. Stun goes out by 3-3 three, three on the low. Still has six bonus retaliate damage coming in. And they do find the first blood. 3-3 three, three, actually, I think he's might be suiciding to the creeps here. Nah, he'll be fine. He's actually double stout shielded, so he'll be perfectly fine. The double stout creep petting meta. It's mm -hmm. Everyone's favorite. Now they still do a lot of... Well, Axe doesn't really do it anymore, and uh, you definitely do not do it on... I don't, I don't think I've actually seen them do it with the uh, Darkseer. I don't think Dark uh, Not necessarily double stout because you have Ion Shell, so you can hmm. a little faster, but I mean, he still cuts waves. Yeah. Well, like it looks. Good. Go ahead. Well, it looks like just both lanes will be doing their creep cutting. Yeah. Chow's taking up the top lane as well. It's basically the off laners are going to do the off laner jobs and be really, really annoying. So. I hate it when it comes in my games. It happens a lot, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, I love it when I see it happen in pro games because <laughs> then pro players know there's actually a problem with this, but you know, not much you could do. At least it's not Darkseer. 
<laughs> the dark seer in the game is a little seer. harder. Well, no, it, dark seer is great. Like dark seer is fantastic. I'm just saying, like in a pro game, dark seer. Dark dark seer is really really good in a pro game because everybody knows how to actually play dark seer. Oh, as opposed to your pubs where it's like maybe this guy knows how to land back wall. Yeah, well, sometimes people don't know that bristleback can easily go choke the creep wave and take it and walk into the jungle. A lot of people don't actually know how to do creep skipping. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. So what you're telling me is that pro players are better than your random pubs. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like they practice like all day. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Fords. It's it's only four in the morning. Give me a break. All right. Uh, Fada in a bit of trouble. Refractions up and online though. PPD coming in for the heels. Well, FY. PPD actually. Oh, actually, they got everything. And TD rune activated on a bat and. Well, Fada's not going to be able to get saved this time around. They did rotate three heroes into this one, though, so top lane's going to have a little bit of free farm. Yeah, Only for the Chalice time being. is actually going to get back in time for the way he lost one CS for that. He doesn't... That was a worthwhile rotation mm. for him, honestly. Again, shut down the TA. Don't let her have a free game. Maybe going for the sweet plays, but don't know if we'll be able to make it. Are they going to be able to get the Centaur down here? I mean, they've got two Chen creeps. They've got the Centaur stun as well. Actually, 3-3 three, three is just getting destroyed by these creeps. He's Not done. dropping the Conqueror stun, though. Lift into the Centaur stun. He's got to walk around the tree if he wants to get away, but he's being body blocked fairly well, and we'll just go down to right clicks. Maybe. Oh. Nah, yeah, they get him. It was close. It was close. Uh, this is going to be runes. It looks like three... No, two, two split. It'll be 2-2 two, two this time, so no one absolutely dominating in the in the uh, rune market today. Because last time it definitely was also a 3-1 in the favor of uh, NIP at the 10-minute mark. So, Still, though, LGD is actually winning in the uh, in the CS department. Yeah, Ace Just, uh, is doing a pretty decent job on this uh, troll, but Ame is destroying. He's all of this... Like running around that's been going on, the creeps got it, creep cutting and everything else, you know. He's just been hitting creeps. Hmm. Druid is probably one of the best heroes to deal with the creep cutting meta because he just tanks it with a bear. You take no damage on your hero. So he doesn't he's not worried about it and now he's going for the kill potential on thirty three. He's got that root available. He's just praying and hoping, but won't find it. Our right, Jesus does not favor him today. I mean, it favored him when he hit the cannon, though. <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't favor him. That's that. That's the root of the explanation here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mid lane, uh, Ember... It looks like Ember's pulled a... Fall behind a little bit, but it's just because Fada's been juggling. So the CS numbers are a little bit inflated at this point. If you take a look at that word, uh, slightly, actually, for... Fair, maybe. Nothing crazy. Three heroes in the mid, though. They want to try to make a jump on Fada, but they're going to turn this around immediately as they do manage to push FY up to the hill. FY definitely going down here. PTD to claim the kill. Center ultimate being expended to get the confirmed kill on Fada, and Ember just trying to find somebody, but not able to find the Searing Chains, so... Arcane Ember is just disgusting. Like, <laughs> it's, it's such, such good value. 24 second cooldown on uh, your Flame Guard. You have very low cooldown on Slate of Fists. It's not quite as bad because it's uh, only level one. Mm. PPD back in trouble again, looking for the deny, but FY is going to fade Bolton just in time. Fada TPing in, that might not be great because the Arcane Rune is still active. Dyer's top tower is being attacked like nobody else. Sound as well. <laughs> they are perfectly content. Uh, LGD is perfectly content with leaving in Chalice to creep cut. Like, they know Ace is having a good start to the game, but Ame is rapidly approaching his Midas at 8 minutes. I've already got the phase and the gold haste, so it's just the 600 gold for the recipe now. And even though with the free farm that Pop Ace has had, he's gonna not, he's not gonna be able to keep up with his bear. He's going a fighting build, which is good at least. He's not going for like a greedy battle fury or anything. It's still gonna be a tough timing. Hmm. <laughs> Chalice just runs right into the to, to <laughs> Ooh. Well, the good thing they forded that courier, actually. It's definitely the cool sprays would have killed it. Actually, two cool sprays would have killed it, but... 
All right, well, it's eight minutes in. I, I feel like I could switch to the net with chart and confidence. It was still the same, basically, as uh, we looked at the last. So, Ame still leading the top. Gonna go for the Midas. Troll's gonna go for the Diffusal first, so we're not gonna see, like, the S and Y first or a farming he item first. He just needs to fight. He needs to be ready as soon as the... I mean... As soon as anybody starts running it, basically, he needs to be able to go. And it's, you know, uh, LGD has some pretty mana-dependent heroes as well. It's not like they have a, a hero that doesn't really care. Like, sometimes you see, like, a Luna or PA, it's like, ah, losing my mana kind of sucks, but I don't need it to survive, I'm still going to kill you. Whereas, like, Ember, Bristleback, yeah, you're going to get the Bristleback passive squills, but... You still want your castables, and Amber really hates playing against these barriers. That man is sucks. Ace being chased down underneath this tower. He's Just got three ult. spikes. Yeah, he will. He probably will have to ult here. I can't imagine there's any immediate save method. In fact, the creeps kill him. So there was nothing he really could have done there. If you, he didn't want to burn that ultimate either. It's... Yeah. No creeps for him to like kind of disjoint off to. I mean, obviously, since he can't control it, it's not something he's going to be able to do, but still. Yeah, there's there's not really that much fun. So that, that'll that be the uh, the big showing of what's going to happen every time Troll tries to do anything. It's <laughs> just on the room. Ami lets him know that I, I see you. I see you. Looking for the rune snipe. Oh, bear comes. Yeah, they get it. They sniped it, but it's still going to be a 2-2 two -two even pickup. They can't snipe off the bear quick enough. No. 2-2 two -two is, again, it's, it's better to do a split like that for ninjas than it is to give up that extra room. So good play from Soxa, just securing that. It's... It feels like a slow game still. Like I'm just waiting for the go button, basically, from LGD right now. Nips in full recovery mode. The, they've lost their safe lane tower, so Ace is unfortunately going to have to play in this very unsafe part of the map. You don't want to be playing top, but unfortunately, 33 hasn't had this stellar game where he's able to make moves around the map, and TA's in recovery mode, so Ace is forced to play this top side of the map. They're going to actually have to give up this T2. Just can't Radiant structures are well, I, even if they wanted to, there's three dominated, there are three, yeah, dominated centaurs that Chen's running around with. That's the, that's the solution. If they, if you don't trap stuns, just get Chen creeps. I think Chen was also banned in first phase in the last game. So yeah, this is this is them not banning Chen first phase because they first picked the Chen. They definitely had ample opportunity to find out the right kind of counter to Chen, but maybe they weren't really expecting uh, Nova to just run at them with three centaurs. Yeah, which one of which? Once in bottom, but other than that, he's at least not incredibly farmed. But he's <laughs> going to have his his medallion up. He's and he's made space. That's all he needs to do. I have been a distraction. Welcome to my show. Welcome to my show. <laughs> Three centaurs and a guy on gorillas. I mean, I was gonna make a terrible plan, but I'm gonna let that one go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just trust me that it was bad. Yeah, no, no, I definitely trust you, 100%. Forge, I picked you for this very reason. I trust you. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you picked me for my puns. I, I take that as compliment. But sure. <laughs> I picked you for your puns. Anyway, 12 minutes in, we're still seeing the Radiance build going to be the primary thing for the Lone Druid. It's nothing abnormal here. It's pretty standard to see this bad boy back down to bottom, though. We are seeing an engagement, and <laughs> LGD's just walking down the lanes. They can't do anything about it. Are going back to, uh, well, I'd love to say we're going back to the magic build, but uh, I think usually, no, 25 damage still with the magic build is not a bad idea, but I like uh, I like the Veil. He's got, like, really weak damage at the very beginning of the game. However, he didn't go Searing Chains, so that's, that's you don't interesting. Need it. You're, most of you, the reason you get Veil is for the uh, Flame Guard. Flame Guard is your, your high mm -hmm. DPS spell, but the Chains is just to keep them in the 
in the flame guard, but when you have an Abaddon backing you up, it, it doesn't really make sense to max the chains because it's just going to get purged off anyway. So he goes for this uh, high flame guard build, which is also good against the TA. And then this Light of Fist that so you can still you know, be elusive and dodge in and around. Now you go back for this Veil to amp up the ma magic damage. It's also going to uh, amp up the damage that the Radiance is going to do. The Rubik, it's, it's actually a very good Veil game. LGG, they're smoked up in the back lines, trying to find maybe maybe a pickoff here, but maybe also doing some warding. Courier comes in. Nah, there's no wards on the courier, so purely a gank attempt as well as divine favor keeping somebody in. They do bring in the Ember Spirit. They want to get the kill on Ace. They find the root. The lift will follow suit, trying to get him onto the Centaur, but they throw in the Magnetize from Soxka. Then yeah, he's dead. <laughs> there's not much they could do. They tried to get him out with the Centaur ult, but he's not getting out of that one. And now they're just going to walk through mid. They got they got another stun available. It feels like game one, but in reverse. Where now it's very just, much. It's just LGD with this massive army. Before it was the Eidolons, now it's the Chen Creeps, and then the Bear. Bear doesn't even have Radiance yet. Yeah, he's already just whacking down these towers pretty good. They will start to leave. PPD maybe trying to find a pick off, but not really going to be able to find one. The Fusal Blade, Ace, not really finding a pick off on that one either. I guess Chalice is the only target they could really get, and they don't really want to fight Chalice, because he still is a very strong boy. In fact, he's got a Crimson Guard, so... <laughs> this is the Centaur stunts. <laughs> They're just trying to chase him every time they go for it. Mm -hmm. Another Centaur came in. Uh, they will get runes. They do. <laughs> I was gonna say they do find the stomp on Chalice, but nothing you could really do about that. This will back just uh... runes for LGD. Six K net with advantage at 15 minutes. And a very very tanky Bristle Boy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, second in the net worth chart. He's gonna go for the Heaven's Halberd. Into the well, Faith Boots, then the Heaven's Halberd, most likely. So, very, very easy game for Chalice. He's 1-0, 116 CS as well. Not leading the net worth, but uh, he's tied up with the Lone Druid. Or tied up with the Lone Druid. If he was tied up with the Lone Druid, I'd be concerned. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah tied up with the Troll. Far. Well, you, you know, it can happen. Uh, remember the old uh, Radiance Octarine builds? Those were, the, those were the Cancer days. Oh, yeah. I mean, people still go for that, but yeah. That was in the pro scene when they when they did that, and Octarine was like the go-to item for the Bristlebank. Yeah. Now Radiance isn't really much of the go-to item for a lot of heroes nowadays, but it's really just like, what, there's like maybe a pool of three, four-ish total heroes that go for Radiance almost every time? Alk. Alk, Lone Druid, Life Stealer. I think that's it. Yes. There, there was a time where it was the Ember Spirit. Uh, I used to see it occasionally in Ember Spirit. Like, it's, mm. it's not uncommon. Uh, but definitely not the every time pickup that it can sometimes be. Hmm. Anyway, easy go, Sean, for LGD. He's gonna clean up this bad boy, no problem. And bashed up. The other thing, too, I'm, I'm looking at NFD's draft, and I talked about this uh, in game one and a little bit earlier in the draft, but look at the damage types again. It's it's all the physical damage. The only magic damage, really, that they have to worry that LGD has to worry about in these team fights is Soxa. And Soxa's level 7. So he's not really going to be doing that much. Even the Rubik. Like, it, Rubik's is, Rubik and Chen are both higher level than him. Uh, so once this. Like, mech comes online, there just isn't really a whole lot of damage on NIP. You've already got a Crimson a med and a Medallion. Two Medallions, actually. The uh, Heaven's Albert is going to be coming out soon to negate, just completely delete either TA or Troll from a fight, depending on what you want. There's just not going to be a whole lot of damage to, to threaten either this Ember or this Bristle or this Lone Druid. As any fool can see. NIP TPing back. Yeah, there's. It, it's gonna be. There's not really much they'll be able to do. It's exactly a complete repeat of the last game, just switched on sides. Yeah. So. No, uh, no racks at this point, though. To, to yeah, the NIP first racks were already racks. down. 
Yeah. So, to NFP's credit, they are holding a little bit better. There's a higher threat. God, it feels weird to see it back with no ultimate at nine. They do find the lift on the troll. He's dead immediately. Ace with buyback available. They're gonna have to do it. They drop the ultimate out from the centaur. Now we have people these ultimate being specked up and active, and it's not really gonna do much. Nova goes down. They find the kill on Fada. 3-3 being chased away ever so slowly. The double edge stolen from the Rubik. And Ame might be the only kill that could be happening here. Ace really looking for a net, but just couldn't find any nets from his ult. Now he pops his ultimate down onto Chalice. TA buys back as well. There's the lift coming up from the Rubik. Delaying the ultimate time for as long as possible. There's another shield. Ace really just trying to find a kill, but he just gets clicked down. And that's a dieback. 70 seconds without your troll. And not to mention, we have buyback on Fada as well. He just can't get caught out. If he does, that's that's game. That is a perfect example of literally what I was just talking about. That was a full duration, full seven stone mega tides from, from Soxa. Like, he did everything he possibly could in that fight. And I think the Chen died. Maybe the Rubik died. They just didn't have any damage. Yeah, they burst Ace at the start of the fight, but even once he buys back and he gets in there, all of these armor items coming out and the lack of diversity and damage from NIP means that they just stand there, they just fight them. There's no threat on on LGE right now. They didn't even burn the Aegis on Amber Spirit. LGD looking to claim the next set of barracks here. Well, not next set of barracks, but they're looking to claim a set of barracks because they technically didn't take both sets. We do have an engagement going in, but the centaur stop immediately finds a double kill and triple going down. The NIP are done. They dropped the GG. 20 minutes faster than the NIP game. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you can't win when with a butt with a buyback and your TA hitting it everything she can and Soxa getting a full duration hang of times off.